You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Hey guys, Christian here. Normally on the show, we attempt to keep things as child-friendly as possible, but every now and then we can hit some harder subject matters or may even have some verbal discourses that may not be suitable for younger or more sensitive ears to hear. In this episode, there may be either a discussion on more mature topics or may have strong language or perhaps both at once. Your discretion is advised. Is season one of Rick and Morty perfect? How does it stand in the pantheon of adult cartoons? Is it still the cultural phenomenon it once was? Can Rick Sanchez teach us anything about human nature? And what does the future hold for Rick and Morty? What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm Nick. Uh, This is Systematic Ecology. We are the Priests of the Geeks, and we're going to be addressing some of these topics about Rick and Morty. Um, And I'm here, the we in this episode is myself and Will the Thrill. Rose yeah, yeah. here. Hey, 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 everybody. We've been wanting to do this episode for a while, and we've had to convince uh, the schedule and our own schedules and the stars and the multiverse and uh, um, other hosts to say this needs to happen pronto. And we finally made it happen. Yeah, we had we to shot do a some... portal gun. We shot a portal gun and uh, Nick and I jumped, jumped through it. And here we are recording yeah. episode together right here <laughs> in Zencaster world, you know, with in that old person world or whatever. Is that this season or is that the next season? Yeah. I, who knows? Who the knows, seasons man. all jumbled together. <laughs> the point is we pulled some Rick Sanchez science to make this happen. Mm-hmm. We, did. we did. Uh, so I guess before we go through, uh, it's, you know, just a trigger warning to our more sensitive viewers out there or listeners that don't really like adult cartoons or crude humor you've been warned uh it's rick and morty uh there there's yeah. a character named mr poopy butthole so there you go uh uh so <laughs> yeah I, i'll add to that like yeah it, it's weird that like you know we're we're on um unashamed christian podcast but we also like make no secret that we have a broad spectrum of of Christian beliefs here from conservative to to liberal and everywhere in between. And, and like, we have a broad audience and like, yeah, this show isn't for everybody. If you're sensitive to these things, then yeah, you don't, you don't have to watch it. You don't need to watch it. I, I think it's hilarious. I think it's well written. I think they ask some big questions. Obviously the people who wrote this are, are not like people of faith or even believe in God, but they're still wrestling with some big existential questions that I think are important for us to face. Hey, Amen. And also in the kind of the pop culture geek world, they need to be addressed. We need to talk about it. It's hugely popular. And you have two two people of faith here who are willing to talk about it, even entertained by it and laugh at it and uh, wrestle with it. So, yeah, if it's not your cup of tea, no worries, no shame, no geek shaming. Cool. But if but if uh, you want to you want to try it out for the first time or if you're a fan and want to chime in with us and talk about it and geek out on it with us, then uh, welcome to the table. Heck, yeah. So uh, speaking of our diverse uh, interests and loves and backgrounds, uh, what's something that you've been nerding out on lately, Will? Yeah, I went to a Comic-Con last week and Ray and Josh and I were like in person together again, uh, run around like a Comic-Con floor, uh, like two happy geeks um, with a friend of mine, Lee. It was his birthday. Shout out to Lee Stutz. Yeah, Lee. Uh, And and, and we went to uh, Heroes Con in Charlotte and saw some creators that we really love, um, uh, writers and artists and, um, everywhere in between. So, um, geeking out hard on that, on that, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of squeezing in just a few hours on one day, but, but yeah, getting the comic cons back up and going again, um, was, uh, was, uh, was super fun. So geeked out hard on that. That's rad. I'm jealous. There's one happening in Knoxville. It's called like Fanboy Con or something. And all of the actors, not all of them, but a large portion of the actors who played in the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings films are going to be there. Oh. Sadly, I will not be able to make it, but I was very sad. Uh, and it looks really cool. But it's exciting that all these cons are are kind of popping up and yeah, being attended kind of again. Looking like the before times, you know, uh, there's there's one in, in North Carolina here, one that I've been a part of for a while uh, coming up in November. I'm excited about, too. I'm hoping that since my geology might have um, maybe do a panel, maybe maybe do a live podcast from from the Comic-Con. We'll see. We're, we're trying to work something out, making no promises, but we're going to work on it. We're going to see what happens. I like it. I like it. And, uh, you know, 
with comic cons and stuff, you get lots of nerdy things happening simultaneously. And in my own world, I have had two people. So I've watched Game of Thrones show, but I never read the books. So I started on the first book and I've also never read the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. So I've started both of those. So I finished the first uh, Dark Tower book and now I'm almost done with the first Game of Thrones book. And so I'm going to flip flop in between and just go through that series because it's obviously nice. they're both staples of nerd culture. So and I enjoy and there's both. so many Game of Thrones books. You'll probably f- finish those before the next one's written. Good Lord, you're so right, though. <laughs> you got plenty of time, I think. <laughs> plenty of time. <laughs> so uh, we that's what we're nerding out on. And uh, we're going to jump right into Rick and Morty because that's what we're here to talk about. Uh, so, Will, when and how did you get introduced to Rick and Morty? And what did you think when you when you saw it for the first time? Or at least do you remember seeing an ad for it and remember your reaction to it? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. I, um, big fan of adult swim on the cartoon network, Yeah, you know, Saturday night, Saturday night, they have the, the anime night. Um, and then Sunday they had the kind of the comedy adult, uh, cartoons that were, were running. And so, you know, as being a minister, sometimes, you know, I got to go to bed a little bit, um, you know, um, earlier on Saturday night to get up on Sunday morning. Someone's got to work on Sunday morning, but you know, some nights I'm trying to get to sleep. I'll, I'll just, um, I put the anime on, on, on Saturday night and just kind of fall asleep to it. And then on, um, on a Sunday night, tired, good day's work. I'll, I'll check out and see what's going on with adult cartoons and, and see what, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the adult cartoons that are, that make me laugh. And, um, I do remember seeing a little bit about Rick and Morty and didn't quite understand and understand it. I think I saw the pilot and, um, just thought like, the pilot's not my favorite, but they're just trying to set the tone. And, you know, who's this drunk grandpa who's hanging out with a, his kid is like a rip off of a back to the future. And I was just like, OK, what, whatever, you know, I don't, I'm not going to really, you know, hone in on that. Not my cup of tea. But then later on, kept hearing about it, this buzz about this buzz about Rick and Morty. And then and then Rick and Morty started showing up like at, at Comic Cons, you know, right. and people were cosplaying. There were T-shirts. And I was like, what is going on? And people talking about how funny it is. And I was like, all right, I'll go back and I'll go back and, and check these out. So I found them and watched, um, you know, all the seasons kind of caught up to, and then watched them in real time. Now, uh, when whenever they come out and debut, won't miss an episode um, just to see what kind of shenanigans and craziness is going to go on. So, but um, yeah, blaze through that first season, which we're going to talk about today. The, the first season, there's six seasons and this came out, what, 10 years ago, like 2013. Man, pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Something like so that. I Ever? think it's been around, it's been in pop culture for a decade, you know, and, and, and in the zeitgeist and the memes of the day. So it's, it's out there and uh, it was kind of cool, a little late to it, but then, but then caught on. Um, and uh yeah, that was kind of my introduction. How about how about you, Nick? Where when did you discover it, or how did you discover it, and how did it lure you in? <laughs> yeah, man, I'm also a big Adult Swim fan. Been kind of a staple of my early uh, interests for nerdy things. Um, you know, I was I'm a wee I'm a wee tyke, and so Adult Swim started becoming really popular when I was around first grade, second grade. So I'm just a babe, right. but I would also just refuse to go to sleep and my parents we had we all had tvs in our rooms and so i would turn on the tv and turn the volume real low like i wasn't supposed to and i didn't know that there was a difference between anime and american cartoons and adult cartoons or whatever i would just had it on the background and so i got introduced to things like dragon ball z really early Mm -hmm. and uh, this adult swim stuff, but I didn't really get it. You know what I mean? It would be humor. Some of it was inappropriate and I, I knew I wasn't supposed to be watching it, but I didn't know why. <laughs> and my dad came in and heard the TV or saw the light or something. And first he was mad, um, but that I was up, but then he was like, you're not allowed to watch this. And of course, then I was like, okay, well I need to make sure that I'm watching this and, uh, watch, <laughs> continue to watch adult swim throughout my adolescence and into adulthood. So I, um, I actually, that was, so I was like either right at the end of college or had just graduated when Rick and Morty came out and I actually hadn't heard of it. So I was kind of busy with life, didn't have the money to pay for TV or streaming services at the time. And, um, I have a friend from high school who we watched all the adult swim stuff together. 
And he texted me and he was like, have you seen Rick and Morty? And I was like, I kind of heard about it, but I don't know. So he sent me. So the creators, Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland, used to have an online thing mm. first before YouTube was a thing. They had their own website where they did comics similar to like Homestar Runner, if y'all know Homestar Runner. But instead, it was like very adult humor. And uh, Rick and Morty was originally this cartoon called Doc and Marty basically a cartoon right. ripoff of back to the future send me uh -huh. this video and it is very nsfw um but if you want to go <laughs> search it out it's really funny and that's what basically got adult swim from what i understand to purchase it and start you know get the get the thing rolling for rick and morty um but i just i laughed my ass off at the mm -hmm. stupid little crappy cartoon pilot and then of course uh, i saw mr meeseeks first he said if you want to get into it watch the meeseeks episodes first so season one had already <laughs> begun i yeah. and that might be the arguably the best episode ever in my opinion so i watched it absolutely loved it and uh and have continued to keep up with rick and morty ever since yeah yeah and and dan Harmon being the creator of community which is like right. one of our my, my own family and friends like favorite sitcoms of all time and, and you can see like in that tv show he's still working out some of this kind of meta narrative multiverse characters like deep dives into like geek culture pop culture dungeons and dragons movie references all those things he's he's kind of working out in that tv show that sometimes um the executives and the audience got sometimes they didn't you know and so then you give him like an avenue like um animation and and voice actors to kind of do whatever crazy thing they want to do and can think of in terms of like crazy ideas with multiverse and whatever science fiction and and they just go to town like that sense of humor and i and I, yeah it's not everybody's sense of humor Sometimes people have have um, looked at my sense of humor and thought it was suspect, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it makes me laugh out loud. And 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 there's some references to things that you're like, oh oh my gosh. But but yeah, so Dan Harmon, his his style and sense of humor um, was right up my alley. And it started with Community, and then led in. And then when I found out Rick and Morty was he was behind it, I was like, okay, all right, gave a little bit more legs and legitimacy and and in kind of my my world. Man, it's funny because I Dan Harmon early on um, before that uh, Monster House. Have you seen that movie? No, it's a it's a kids horror movie and Spielberg Spielberg produced it. And I think Dan Harmon wrote it. But that, I think that was kind of his first successful foray into Hollywood. Oh, wow. And I, I mean, it's one of my favorite Halloween movies, like it's tradition for me to watch it. But then when I found out that also kind of similar i was like oh damn Harmon did rick and morty and monster house like no wonder i love rick and morty because it's the same humor references etc um yeah but yeah also yeah yeah so i totally feel uh or empathize with you about have having hum my humor being uh suspect by other people <laughs> that's so. that's how we get along nick that's, that's right. and, and 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 you know and dan Harmon isn't without his like you know skeletons right. uh, in the closet in terms of um some of the things he's done or said or tweeted and you know and then and then justin roiland um i guess is how you say he he's as in trouble as of late for for being abusive and and being super weird toxic in the workplace so mm -hmm. don't even know if he's coming back uh to this show he's a big part they're partners and and big part of the voices and the creativity behind it um so so yeah whenever you get like super weird uh good sense of humor slash craziness and uh off the wall stuff sometimes i can go down ro roads of unhealthy things you know in terms of the mm -hmm. creative process and the artistic mind can take you to weird places but they um yeah, so that we'll have to say we know that there's a lot of baggage that come to these creators. Um, right. Um, but, you know, looking past that and look at the story they're trying to tell and, and what they're doing and its place in pop culture and and then the geek first and, and where people go to look for narratives to attach meaning to and purpose, then I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a topic we should talk about. Our, um, I'll see if... Um, Let's see if Joshua can attach this to the to the the thread or the episode notes. But uh, one of our co-hosts and friends, uh, Sari, um, wrote like a great blog post about in a paper in seminary about Rick and Morty. I have to write really? that down. It's really it's really good. Um, I don't know if she's listening, but uh, I got her to post it a couple of places with our friends over at Pop Culture and Theology. But um, oh I no way, put it in that. Um, 
Yeah, it's really well done. I forgot all what she said in there, but it's basically, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really good. She wrote it for a class. We'll, we'll hunt it down. We'll hunt it down. <laughs> Heck yes. I love that. Yes, Ari, give us your, uh, your, pay, your Rick and Morty paper uh, yep. to share. Uh, so cool. Yeah. Dan Harmon, I think apologized and like at least adult swim and other people forgave him. And then Justin Roiland, I don't know about him, but he has been, uh, terminated his deal adult swim. As soon as his stuff happened, they kicked him out. So it'll be interesting to see. So right now, at least Dan Harmon seems to be somebody that we like because he is funny and has at least apologized without being a jerk. And right now, Justin Roiland is, uh, uh, the jury is, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's in or out yet for a Justin yep. Roland. Right now, I think it's out. So anyway, uh, so I guess since since we addressed all that, um, I guess season one, man, uh, we talked about kind of how you feel about it. Obviously, we think it's funny, but season one, uh, after you revisit it, how do you how do you feel about season one? I didn't realize all that happened in in season one. Like yeah. I, I, in my mind, there's six seasons, and they're still kind of rolling them rolling them out. Um, but um, you know, in terms of going back and rewatching and remembering some of the characters and the things they introduced in the season one, it's like, oh yeah, that happened in season one. That person introduced in season one, and they just kind of build upon all these ideas and characters and and things. And um, let's see how many how many episodes we got. We got eleven. Ten. Eleven. Is there eleven? I think there's 11 with the yeah, pilot. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Pilot, oh, you're right. And then, and then um, yeah, the pilot and then 11. And the pilot, you know, if you watch the pilot, it is just typical pilot. Not as good as the rest of the series. It's just working out some ideas or floating some things out there so someone will pick them up, you know. And it basically comes out, you know, you have a drunk um, – a granddad who's somehow living with his family because of something that has happened. And he takes his grandson on adventures, like kind of a crazy rated R back to the future kind of, kind of thing. And they introduce like wacky aliens and interdimensional travel and those kinds of things. So it's just kind of the, kind of the setup. And, and it is, you know, Rick really doesn't flex as much um, just because he's, He's, he's been drinking all the time. He's drunk and he's he's definitely trying to self-medicate for some reason. We'll find 100%. out in later seasons why he is self-medicating, um, all, all those things. So all that's rolling out. So you have the pilot. And then I really think my personal favorite episode, episode two, you then you then really get into the heart of what's going to happen in in this series and, and, and what's going to roll out. Um, do you want me to go ahead and talk about my favorite episode? <laughs> Season. Uh, I'll just tell you that I agree with you that it was one of those things where, uh, you know, it's kind of similar. I was like, dang, I forgot all of this stuff happens. And it does start off where it's like, Rick is kind of this more of this bumbling alcoholic douchebag and it's yep. funny, but he cares about his family and loves Morty. And it's, as you progress, it starts getting more heavy and like, there's more tension within the family Rick's, mm -hmm. you know, antics start affecting his family negatively and it starts creating this whole thing. So, um, and then, of yeah, course, and we're... we can talk about some of those things. Yeah, you're right. Like it's, it's heavy, like the creators are leaning into the, the crazy science and science fiction and it leans hard into existentialism and like oh, nihilism yeah. and the universe. There's an indifferent universe who doesn't care about you and there's no, that, yeah, even Rick even says, yeah, don't, there is no God, Morty, just rip that bandaid right yeah. off. And so you're like, oh boy, okay. Uh, just rip that bandaid off right now. And they, and, and they roll with it. But, but yet behind that, even as we, you know, explore those existential, existential questions and nihilism, it's definitely an option, right? Like you look at the universe and you're like, yeah, that, that's an option, an uncaring universe full of pain and suffering. Um, nihilism is a, is an option. Um, but then as they still like, as they start talking about no meaning, there's no purpose. And it's just like, just one adventure to the next, there, there's still a family connection. They're totally. still, they still care for each other. They're still looking for meaning and purpose. There's still pain at the loss of family members. There's, there's not wanting to die. There's like reaching for meaning behind death. And is there anything worth in my life in the first place? So they're still wrestling with those questions. And so that that's where I go into it as a person of faith who looks at this and say like, yeah, yeah, these guys who write this are not like going to church or like confessing any kind of like Christian creeds or anything, but they are, but they're definitely still wrestling with those big questions that every single human per being wrestles with in terms yeah. of, you know, is there a purpose behind this universe? And if there's not, then, then where do I find meaning? If there is, then what does that look like? So that's, that's what's going on behind the crazy, inappropriate, like 
uh, humor that you definitely don't want like a first grader watching. Right. Like, I don't know if you start with <laughs> Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Not only just for the, you know, the dick and fart jokes, but for just even how existentially heavy it can get. Yeah. Uh, I, I just don't think they could handle it. And I think that, like you said, with nihilism there, it's like the best and worst explorations of nihilism come out in the show not like just the oh nothing matters so let's just destroy everything it's more right. of like nothing matters so how do we make our own meaning um, and yeah. all of the characters kind of go through that but then also there's the negative aspect where you start ignoring others potentially for your own uh things so that happens and it's a uh, it's it's just it's just really good it's very uh striking um and thought-provoking so um yeah, what about yeah, I think you? I read, yeah, I read Run for You and it's like in a heartless universe, this show uh, surprisingly has heart from time to time. A hundred percent. That's I was like, that's a good, that's a good quote. That's a good review of this show. Yeah. So where did you uh give me your your episodes? We we said what were your top ep- two two episodes? And if you have more, uh do it. But you know, tell me where you saw the humor, the heart, all that good stuff. Yeah. So so yeah, there's episodes that that every, you know, uh, I, I like all the episodes, but then some hit more and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they just did that. And that was, that was, and then, you know, later on, you know, there's going to be pop culture icons and shirts and people saying like, whether well, it's pickle Rick and all that kind of stuff is later on and seasons later. But, but yeah, episode two, it's, um, episode two is, um, lawnmower dog, I think oh, yeah. is, is the, yeah. And so really you have in this episode, really what they're going to do throughout this entire series is what if science, if, if unchecked science, or you're not paying attention to these inventions that you're doing, if you just keep going with it, it's going to, it's going to destroy the entire world. Cause it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. So, so the premise is they have this dog snuffles and, and they're like subjugating it. They're rubbing its face in its own urine. And the dad, Jerry is, is impatient. Can you make this dog smarter? So Rick's like, sure, sure. We're going to go on an adventure and um, you just kind of take care of this dog and give this helmet to give this dog growing sentience. Like it's going to become self-aware and grow intelligence. And eventually it, it, it literally snowballs into um, like these dogs having like these mech suits that take over the entire world because it comes smart. So, yes, Snuffles uh, abandons his slave name Snuffles and becomes Snowball and um, <laughs> takes over pretty much the world while Rick and Morty are doing like an inception uh, dream dive to try to help Morty get an A in math class so he doesn't have to go to school anymore so he can he do more adventures with his his granddad so they go in his math teacher's like brain <laughs> while he's sleeping and, and dive deeper and deeper and deeper into his dreams and so if you like the movie Inception or you don't think the Inception as as good as the rest of the world does then you're right in line with the writers of the show who take yes. really hard shots at Inception um, and there is even like Scary Terry um, which oh, is the, the um, <laughs> which is the uh, Freddy Krueger character they go so down deep into um, nightmares or dreams that you know, Freddy Krueger should I'm sorry not Freddy Krueger scary Terry and uh, <laughs> they befriend him and uh, that's how they get out. But it, it's just so great. And as a dog lover and as I love dogs in the, the way that snowball acts is right in character with dogs should, should, should act. You know, he, he's like, he's taking over humanity. He's disappointing humanity, but yet he's still, has a bond with Morty because Morty, uh, you've always taken care of me. Come by my side and sit at my right hand as I rule the world. And it is just so good. Yeah, Snowball is one of my favorite characters of all time. So yay, Snowball. Oh, I love to at the end where, uh, you know, because of course Rick tries to save the day and gives Morty, uh, you know, whatever sickness happens and snowball works with his human veterinarian to keep Morty for as long <laughs> alive as possible. And, uh, <laughs> then comes to the realization that he's going to do whatever it takes to save his pet instead of putting him down because he realized that, uh, they're dogs and they're better than humans. And it's funny, right. but you're also yeah. kind of like, actually, yeah, dogs are a uh, pure, joyful, beautiful beings that, uh, we as humans do not deserve. Uh, <laughs> That's one point. Snuffles is over the the bed of Summer, and and she wakes up with him standing over her bed, and he's like, "Where are my testicles, Summer? What have you done with them? <laughs> Why did you fix me? What did you do with it?" So it's just that kind of like, "Oh, nothing, nothing." <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, that that just so uh, again, my inappropriate humor that I 
uh, lean into. I like, just laugh out loud at that stuff. So that's that's one of my favorite episodes. And if you like, yeah, the whole and and that's kind of what these episodes do. They have like the plot A, plot B. And then they introduce these characters, one offs, or or they, you know, you think it's a one off character that's just kind of funny for the joke, and then may show up like five seasons later. Oh yeah, through a different dimension or another way. So so don't 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 blink because uh, these characters could could come back. So um, that's it's only the second episode in the entire series, but man, uh, it just all that it does in it, it's just like what they're going to do the breath as a series. So um. Oh yeah, they, it, it hits hard. It hits hard. The, and that's the episode right after the pilot, and it hits hard. Like it's yeah, like scary Terry is like you know the uh, every time you know he at, pretty much after everything scary Terry says too, he says bitch after it. And uh, me yeah, and like my a friends, Bad, like Jesse from Breaking Bad. <laughs> yes, I don't know. I don't know what came first, but I'm thinking Jesse came first. Yeah, I think Jesse <laughs> came first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I still do that with my friends. Scary Terry is still uh, has uh, lives rent free in my brain. Uh, yeah, for better or for worse. Um, yeah, I think that the one that it, I think even still when I revisit it, my number one is still Me Seeks and Destroy, which is episode five, I believe. And oh man, yep. Mister Me Seeks is one of those characters, like you said, that will just periodically show up in the background or whatever throughout the seasons. And, uh, you know, the, you know, me, if you don't know, Mr. Me Seeks is this character that, uh, basically is brought into existence by Rick has a Me Seeks box, uh, because him and Morty are going on an adventure, um, uh, to another dimension where it's like medieval land and they fight a giant in a beanstalk. And uh, Summer, Jerry, and Beth say, hey, we have these remedial tasks that need to be done. Uh, please help us, Rick. Use your science so we don't have to work hard. And um, Rick says, here's this Meeseeks box. You just push the button like a genie. Meeseeks goes up. He completes the tasks and stops existing. And of course, uh, instead of giving Mr. Meeseeks simple tasks like... Uh, you know, open this jar or fix, you know, or change a light bulb. Uh, Beth says, I want to be a more complete woman. Summer says, I want to be more popular at school. And Jerry wants to take two strokes off his golf game. And <laughs> all three are crazy. But the more achievable one you think would be Jerry's two strokes. But in the end, the me seeks are able to pretty quickly get Beth to feel more complete and Summer to be popular. And of course, Jerry uh, is a loser and a little baby and cannot do it and so he brings about all these different me seeks into existence um and if you me seeks can't stop existing until uh they complete the task and so there's they uh their famous line existence is pain and me seeks are not supposed to exist longer than you know 10 15 minutes and some of them are alive for days um and they basically decide to kill jerry uh, because he can't get two strokes off his golf game and they just want to stop existing. <laughs> and one of the lines he said is, he said, we could kill him because then he'll have zero strokes in his golf game. Um, and it's just, it's a great uh, thing where Jerry ends up becoming closer with Beth and uh, ends up taking two strikes off his golf game and avoids being murdered by the Meeseeks. So it's just, it's just so funny. It, it it really is. And it kind of goes to the heart of their philosophy of, of life too. Like, it's like, oh, are we just created for one purpose and then right. we die? You know, and if we don't do that purpose, then yeah, existence is pain. So these me-seeks are kind of like this caricature of like how we all kind of journey through life with like, if we don't fulfill our purpose, then we're just kind of like, we're, we're in, we're, <laughs> we're in agony and pain for just existing, you know? And yeah, again, that's an option. Uh, but, but yeah, of course, Jerry's the one, and that's an ongoing theme in this whole series or every season is that Jerry is a loser. He's, he always screws things up. And of course he's the one that's like the world's about to end because he can't, he can't focus and just square your shoulders and <laughs> turn your hips, you know? And they're like, it seems like it's easy. And then he's like, no, I can't. And he's like, oh my gosh. He was like, how is he? And another me seeks walk up how's he doing can we help out well i'm trying and in there they're they're doing their their thing and and they're like when they emerge they're like hey look at me is is kind of their, mr. Meeseeks, their look at me uh, mr me look at me um and it's just a crazy character but yet 
again, it, it holds up a mirror to like human existence and, and what we're wrestling with. And all these episodes could be a, just a one shot. Like if you want to go and just oh, right. watch a particular episode because it has a character or you hear us talk about it, you could watch that where they build on continuity. There's an underground, there's an ongoing, um, continuous story that builds upon like the lore and a grand narrative with with rick and morty but these episodes could just still be one one shots that you watch one and done uh because of like just the story and the comedy behind it but but yeah they start to build upon this theme that jerry is just a a loser but how does his family bond how do they bring together they don't really like each other but yet these things happen that pull them closer together. <laughs> these tragedies and challenges. Meeseeks is a great character, and and if you pull up what the image looks like and you and you look at it, you'll see it in pop culture everywhere. Everywhere. I actually, when season one, they were uh, Adult Swim did like a travel tour where they had like food trucks and a screen to preview like upcoming shows, and they did season two. Um, and they came to Nashville, and I w- I went to this. It was like a free event. And so I was like, I'm going to, they were going to show like the first two episodes of season two and, uh, they ended up raining out. And so there was like so many people, the line was huge and they ended <laughs> up having to shutting down for safety reasons, but they gave everybody free Meeseeks plushes. And so I have oh. a Meeseeks plush and it will be, it hung in my last office and it will be in my, uh, my classroom office as well. So as a reminder, you have a purpose to teach these kids. That's exactly right. right. If you don't, then existence is pain. That's a, right. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll pick my other episode that one of my favorite episodes in the series. There, there's a lot of good ones, a lot of characters, but I'll I'll also say that um, episode eight, uh, Ricksty Minutes. Oh it's, yeah. Uh, 60 minutes playing off. Yeah, they all have these puns about stuff that's in pop culture. So Rick's D minutes as opposed to 60 minutes TV news shows. And and what they're doing is a family sitting around and they're watching the bachelor and, and Rick is kind of like, what are we watching? This is horrible. Everybody's into it except Rick. And he's like, Oh my gosh, really? This is how you're spending your time, your limited time in existence. You're going to do this. So, so he gets out a box and he turns on interdimensional TV, which is like TV shows from every dimension timeline you could possibly think of the infinite amount of timelines where even there's a tv show where like jerry is popular and is being interviewed by um by a talk show (laughs) david letterman he's being interviewed and so they're like wait a minute go back and it's just some of the craziest stuff you can think i think they just got in the writer's room and they let Royland do his thing and they're like we're just gonna like improv these stupid shows like a salesman who has ants in my eyes johnson he's just doing a tv commercial where he just he has ants crawling around his eyes and that's it. And then he goes, I can't see everything's black, but Hey, it's on sale. Um, and then, and then there's this like movie that they pitch two brothers. It's what I can't even explain it. Just pull up two brothers on YouTube, uh, Rick and Morty, two brothers and watch that, you know, 20 second movie trailer and you will, you will laugh out loud. Um, and then there was one like where the guy was selling doors or fake doors. Oh and yeah. Just Real ends, fake and doors. Just, Real fake doors. And then they thought they were just watching a commercial. And then all of a sudden it just kind of goes through this guy's life, like driving home. And then he gets out and he goes to his house, checks his mail and he goes in the house. <laughs> and you're like, what are we watching? But, but in, in between this episode of these like crazy one off like jokes, you also have like Beth and Jerry wanting to see what their life would be like if they had not accidentally gotten pregnant with summer and what their lives could have been like, would have been better, would have been worse. Beth, uh, summer is going through this existential crisis of like, what if she was aborted? What if she didn't exist? What right. would everybody's life be better? You know? And, and so in the end though, it does have a little bit of a heartwarming story because they realize that in every timeline, they kind of find each other and, and fall mm-hmm. in love. So there's like almost like these spider verse canon events where it's like, Oh, here we go. Um, so, so yeah, in the midst of like nonsense, literally nonsense right? and and jokes that like, you're like, how did anybody think of that? They, there's like even this kind of family connection where they're trying to figure out where they bond and how they love each other, uh, through, through all things. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. But, um, but yeah, I, I love that. And the one uh, and interdimensional TV will come up again in other seasons too. Like you can't wait for that episode where they just go to town, the writer's room and think of like just crazy stuff. It's, so. it's one of the things that some people criticize Royland's humor because he does that improv where he just yep. goes and does obnoxious mm-hmm. stuff. And part of it is he'll just repeat the same thing over again. 
you know, like with the two brothers where he's like, there's two brothers and aliens and two brothers again and this and that. (laughs) And it just, but, and of course, then they leave him laughing, you know, because he's just being so dumb. But I, I, that stuff's so funny. And I think one of the strengths of the show is like you said, in the midst of that nonsense, we're almost like this fateful type of family uniting and like meaning basically being like, no matter what, you're going to end up together and, you know, finding meaning and love in this family. And I think that's one of the almost the more complex, masterful aspects of the show that in the midst of like the chaos and they have A and B plots for each episode and kind of, you know, synthesize them at the end. And they just do it so masterfully well with story um, and the jokes just land. Um, and it's just, yeah. And that episode is, is a great one. Does it, is baby legs in that one too? Or is that a different interdimension? Yes. That's a, yeah. That's I the, the baby police officer too. detectives who's baby legs. He <laughs> just, uh, he's just a detective who has baby legs, but he walks like a baby and, uh, and people are like, shouldn't you? And he's like, I'm a good detective. Yeah. It's, it's nonsense. It's stupid. It's like, what if you had a whole TV show where everyone's just, you know, quote unquote normal. And then like one, one person just has baby legs. Yeah, and goes through life. <laughs> the 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 uh, the uncharted territory that uh, that Rick and Morty explores. You're welcome. Yep. Um, yeah, my uh, I think my other favorite episode is um, it's probably the M Night Shyamalan's one. I really enjoyed <laughs> that one, and I think one of my one of the ways that I rank episodes and Rick and Morty and most episodes in general that are comedy like South Park or something is like the comedy and where the jokes hit. That's, that's where I rate it. And, uh, yeah. I just think the jokes in that one are hilarious. You know, they're the Sligerians, uh, scammers instead of Nigerian, like the Nigerian princes <laughs> who ask people for stuff. And, uh, you know, just the fact that, uh, the jokes in there are hilarious and and Jerry, they're in a simulation essentially. And they're trying to trick Rick into giving them the, these aliens, the, uh, the recipe for dark matter. And, uh, Jerry gets roped in there for some reason and sells an ad campaign for apples and finds the most meaning in his life. And it's completely fake. Um, and it's great. So, yeah. and the, and the voice actors, like you'll recognize voice and like, I think I know, I think that's John Oliver. And you're like, yep, you look it up and there's John Oliver like yep. speaking, you know, or, or Colbert is, is a, is a voice, you know? So Dan Harmon, who's been, a, who, you know, is no slouch when it comes, you think he's just like a goofy, you know, 20 minute cartoon um, with, you know, potty humor but but then but then like he's got the pull from community in hollywood and he's got these big time you know movie stars and actors and people in pop culture to do voicing for um um for for this show and you recognize voices in that yeah so that's another good one where you start recognizing voices in there and you're like okay i think i i think i know who that is (laughs) yeah they feature a celebrity like every episode i think even later Mm -hmm. on which not it's not an endorsement or a dismissal or but it's just how impactful the show is they got elon musk to do a voice for the show which is just how how wide ranging their Mm -hmm. reach is you know it's just crazy that someone like elon musk they did i think kanye loved their show and actually paid them i think when he was still married to kim kardashian paid them specifically to make him a individualized birthday cartoon for him (laughs) and it's just like that's crazy yeah it's just crazy it is so um what do you think so you know looking where we are but um you know i I mentioned south park and stuff but within cultural phenomenons obviously rick and morty's been around for a decade now um but where do you think it stands in you know the pantheon of the simpsons south park and family guy are like the big three that people you know that are still going people use them as reference points do you think rick and morty belongs in that pantheon Oh, it you, definitely does. I yeah, mean, I agree. It, it, I, I think, I think it does with the, the intelligent, right? You would think like unintelligent humor, but intelligent, like meta narratives where they're go, they're digging at certain pop culture things, but also telling a story and has this kind of multiverse. They, they do the multiverse in a way that's just not like it's not dumb or dismissive. Like it's actually could work. Like you start it's thinking true. about these it's things. Good like, yeah, it's good sci-fi too. It's good sci-fi stuff in there that like they explain things well in this kind of goofball cartoon. But I think it's mainstay. If you just judge it by like uh, it's 
presence at pop culture, comic cons, t-shirts, you know, commercials. Yeah. It, it was kind of an underground thing. And they even dig at itself about being, you know, almost kind of selling out and doing commercials for like Taco Bell or whatever, but like it, uh, it, um, it, it's up there. And I think it's just, you know, in terms of the Simpsons, it's not just a cartoon, yeah, for kids, but it has like adult humor and, and wrestles with big stories and questions. Like it, this, this is right up there with it. And so, yeah, it can't, it'd be interesting because these guys are so volatile and, and such a lightning rod. And, and it, it'd be interesting to see what history will tell, you know, in terms of these creators and right. where it stays. But, but it's right up there with like people can't wait for the next season to see how it unfolds and the ongoing continuity. Like towards the end of season one, you then start to see the Council of Ricks. Oh yeah, this multiverse, like underground, um, evil Rick, evil Rick, and evil Morty, who's the behind the scenes. And you think, oh, oh that's kind of fun because they multiverse. There might be evil Will out there somewhere, doppelganger, whatever. But but yet, there's an ongoing narrative or plot line that's being brought into other seasons as well that they're building upon. And then the finale, you know, it says you know, think they're just having like a big party because the parents are gone. They, they can party. Like there's characters that show up at this party. They're just like just bonkers. Um, I can't imagine how they came up with that in the writing room, uh, laughing and writing it up on like a, you know, whiteboard, these oh, ideas, yeah. but then, but these, they're going to show up later on in other seasons too. So again, Dave. like it's up there, it's up there, um, on the pantheon of, uh, cartoons, adult cartoons that stick around and have its, have yeah. its impact on pop culture. Yeah, I think part of it too you can see is just the longevity of like merchandise in pop culture because obviously pop culture is re really connected to market and production of of things in our culture. And I think that they're still, you know, outselling South Park merch and Family Guy merch and Simpsons yeah. merch and Rick Good and Morty. Go to State Fair. Go to State Fair and they're, 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 they are. Everywhere, man. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. It's it's a great writing. You know, the the, the jokes are really funny, um, and uh, like you said, the cultural uh, longevity is there. Um, mm -hmm. So we had kind of talked about it a little bit, um, and before we get to the wrap up, just kind of we talked about how you know probably the main showrunners are atheists themselves, not really into. It's very nihilistic, but. Um, what as people of faith which is you and i and maybe people who are and probably lots of people who are listening to this like why do you think it is potentially good for us to engage with um uh with rick and morty's you know particular mm. atheistic nihilism or at least how can we do that healthily yeah, I think I think one we could yeah, as people think we stick our head in the sand and ignore that that's a philosophical option that's mm -hmm. been around a long time for thousands of years, you know. Right. And so, yeah, and and to understand what's in the zeitgeist or in pop culture or what you know, not not just like what people are, not just spying on people for an agenda so that we have arguments to win them to our side. I'm uh, that's not why I'm watching it. I would legitimately want to understand why they see the universe that way. Yeah. And 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 um look in go underneath so if they're asking a question or they have a joke, what's behind that joke? What are they really wrestling with? What are their deepest fears? What what is what keeps them up at night? You know, what what are the big questions that haunt them that they can't let go of? And you know, I think if you write, they may say that they're atheists, they don't believe God ripped that band-aid off, you know, that God doesn't exist. But uh, you keep pushing them. Maybe I think we're all on the spectrum of agnosticism where we're not sure. So how right. far are we on that on that on that spectrum? And so um you push them hard enough, like, yeah, there's still meaning behind this. There's still family, still love. There's still connection. They want to see a bigger picture behind the universe. Maybe there's a moral arc to the universe or not. And you keep pushing them, then, then they may say, like, yeah, as we write this, we do see an emergence of a moral arc to the universe. Even Rick Sanchez's universe might have a moral arc to it um, at some point. And so I don't think when the series is all said and done, they're going to come out and be like, yay, there's a moral arc to the universe and there's purpose and everybody loves each other. And yay, right. they, 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 they rip um, the, the hypocrisy of organized religion, oh, a yeah. new one, every, every other episode. But, but I think it's good for us to hear that and to understand that and that people see us that way or maybe we're 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 putting off that kind of vibe and need to need to look ourselves in the mirror but then also see what people are wrestling with and some of these characters make me laugh really hard so 100 percent. yeah if you can uh 
if you can address nihilism with uh, really funny jokes, it makes it a lot more palatable. Um, but I'm somebody who is particularly drawn towards nihilism and existentialism myself. And it's, you know, mm-hmm. very much like a, uh, you know, I, and I think that I see a point of, um, oh, like connection with people who are maybe are more atheistic nihilism, uh, nihilist or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, but more of because I feel like God has called us to create meaning in our lives with our mm-hmm. wills, with other people. And so we're really not that far off, I think, from each other than, you know, I know that you've done a lot of religion and science and not to say that nihilism and atheism has to go with science. But, right. you know, there's, I think that when we engage in these questions to say like, yeah, we feel some heavy things and sometimes life feels meaningless. And even when it does we have to kind of lean on the people we love and, uh, and make decisions for ourselves and, uh, brick and Morty, uh, like you said, does it really well while making us laugh at the same time. Yeah. And I, you make a good point. Like, yeah, the stereotype is that religion is like, Oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm don't believe in science. Don't want to go down that road. And then science, the stereotype is like not going to go down religion <laughs> that road. But I, as a person who embraces both, you know, right. this, this is like looking at this, you know, they have to science their way out of, um, you know, challenges and situations all the time. And yet in them, there's real human relationships going yeah. on. And, and so it, they say there's no moral arc in the universe, but yet there's something guiding their principles. So there's something guiding them and pushing them forward to, to make choices. And so it's all intertwined with all that. So I think, yeah, like this is a perfect example of like, it tries to, but Hey, seasons later on, Jesus act literally shows up. So uh, yes. you'll have to <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. There's Jesus shows up in future seasons. Um, uh, be warned or, or go in with a, with a really open sense of humor. <laughs> and he's a, uh, Jesus is hot and he has a, yep, yep. uh, what are they? I can't even say it. Uh, nope, <laughs> yeah, nope, I, won't I won't say it. it. I won't say it. Don't, don't say it, but it has, has some abs. Let's just say that. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, it's, he's very hot and the veggie tails are show up and they actually see hot Jesus and, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sparkle in awe of him. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> So if you want us to talk more about sexy Jesus and Rick and Morty, uh, let us know and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get there. We'll, we're we're going to go through all these seasons at some point. Yes. So we'll get there. We'll get there, y'all. We'll get there, y'all. All right. So moving into our wrap up, uh, do you have any recommendations for our listeners, Will? Yeah, you know, I think it's a good time to be a geek. And so my recommendation is going to be like, you know, uh, there's a writer strike. There may be some slow ups in some of the TV shows and movies that are coming down the road that are supposed to be that people are like um, throwing out dates and and the press releases. So maybe go back to your favorite show and do some rewatches. Mm. Uh, enjoy your stuff now. Um, Secret Invasion is out there. I watched the first episode. I really liked it. It wouldn't let it wow me off the chart like it's the best thing I've ever seen in the world but man it's marvel and it's samuel jackson and emily clark and i'm like man it's got it's got such a incredible um you know cast here and i'm just gonna enjoy it for it is and listen to the story so yeah we got a lot of movies coming out and there may be some things that that we wish they'd done a little differently but but enjoy the storytelling behind it and some people worked really hard on these things so my recommendation is have fun geek out if it's not your thing don't worry about it. same thing with rick and morty it, it may be like one of the funniest things you've ever seen but if you can't take the humor you're like it triggers you or like nope this is not for me then you don't have to watch it there's a lot of geeky options out there so enjoy being a geek and and there's pl- it's a good time to be a geek it's a good time to be a geek anytime you're a geek and you are struggling with gatekeeping or feeling negative go to will go to pastor will rose he'll uh he'll give you some uh you know, some <laughs> priestly advice, geeky advice. Um, That's right. That's right. Do some priestly pastoral care. Ah, I love it. Geeky uh, pastoral care. Ah, the best kind. Um, uh, you know, for my, me, I'm a, I, I was talking to Will, I am working as a barista again for the summer before I start my job as a teacher in the fall. And, uh, I've just been watching a lot of really nerdy, uh, mm-hmm. espresso and, and coffee making videos. And there's a guy named James Hoffman, who's like the goat when it comes to coffee and specialty coffee and stuff. So I would say if you love coffee and you want to up your game, uh, go to James Hoffman's YouTube channel and just do some exploring. Sweet. Yeah. I love coffee. I'm addicted. 
Uh, yeah, I go to bed and I go, I can't wait for my coffee in the morning. And I'm then saying. my daughter, who's like addicted to coffee as well, is like, you know, that's an addiction. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's not like I'm setting my alarm for 530 just so I can do it. But like, yeah, I'm, I, I go to bed thinking like tomorrow I'm going to get a good night's sleep and I, I know what's waiting for me in the morning that's going to get me up. I can't wait. They have shown though that studies, this is real, that it improves your heart health and there's zero calories or there's like very, there's like five calories. So if there's something to be addicted to, uh, coffee is the thing not to do because it's actually good for you. Um, obviously, like on a daily basis, not in overconsumption because then everything, overconsuming anything will kill you. All in moderation. That's All right. Almost, be a good steward. Be a good steward of the things you love and geek out on. There you go. Amen. Uh, so everybody, um, you can go to the YouTube channel. We also have mm-hmm. a Discord that you can join. We have a uh, Patreon that you can get on there and you can get extra content and uh, you can hang out with all the hosts. Uh, and it's, it's a good time. Get super nerdy and geeky. We'd love to geek out with you. Um, d- did you have something to add? Will? Oh, I was just gonna say, if you're not following us on Instagram, sometimes I'm, I do like my um, Will's pull list. I'll, I'll do like, I'll show you what comics I bought. You can, you can go do that. And then, yeah, they're growing our YouTube channel. I'm, I'm very impressed. Um, what what we're doing there and yeah there's a again a host of options on youtube but but it's fun to hang out with friends and hear people who care about you and care about the things you geek out on and uh process that with you so um yeah go over and check those out subscribe like share all those things help help widen our circle yeah and uh you know just from somebody who i have gotten a uh, curated comic book recommendation list from Will. So uh, he's the guy to go to. He's the guy. So it's, if, if nothing else, it's for, uh, you know, Will's pull list. But we've also got some, everybody's awesome on the Systematic Ecology team. Mm-hmm. So yeah, get in there. Get to our, come hang out with us. Um, but yeah, so until the next time, just remember, we're all a chosen people, a geekdom of priests. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.